What's up guys, Gojira54 here. Gojira54. Today we're going to be discussing which is better, Godzilla 2014 or Shin Godzilla. Why bother saying we're going to be discussing which is better when the title spoils the whole point view of the video? We're going to be talking about which film is better. Comparing Godzilla 2014 and Shin Godzilla is like comparing the Death Star to an orange simply because they're both round. They're two completely different types of films, the genre is different, even the purpose they're made is different. But now we're going to sit around for 18 minutes while Richard, whoever he is, pretends none of that matters and proceeds to give terrible reasons for why 2014 is supposedly better. Not who would win in a fight, Godzilla 2014 or Shin Godzilla, that may be saved for another video. Can't wait to watch you talk about that worthless topic in another video. I have never done a video on Godzilla 2014 versus Shin Godzilla. It's kind of funny, he says he's never done a video of Godzilla 2014 versus Shin Godzilla, because from this point on on his channel, that's all he posts. All of the hate I said about Shin Godzilla and I never compared the two. Keep in mind, this is coming from someone who made rants on Shin Godzilla before it even came out in theaters in any country. And he was generally against the movie before anything was really known about it because he didn't like Godzilla's design and various other reasons that I'll get into at the end of the video. Ford Brody, a Navy bomb expert, has just reunited with his family in San Francisco when he is forced to go to Japan to help his estranged father, Joe. This description of the movie came from a Google search of Godzilla 2014 plot. A mysterious monster emerges from Tokyo Bay and wreaks havoc upon Japan. This description of the movie came from a Google search as well. Godzilla 2014 has much more going for it in terms of plot. It's not just Godzilla emerging and destroying and people trying to figure out a way to destroy him. If you actually took time to compare the plot of both movies in depth, forgetting about simple Google searches and actually putting some effort into recapping the story of each movie, you would see that they are equally complex for different reasons. Shin Gojira is about a group of government misfits trying to get a handle on the world's worst disaster against an ever-evolving threat and a government system that's built against them. They must team up with other countries find out the mysteries of Godzilla's origins and save the world in the process. Godzilla 2014 is about a soldier trying to reconnect with his family only to have it ripped away from him when giant monsters appear causing destruction, eventually waking up Godzilla who hunts down the monster and its mate before they can destroy the world. By saying Shin Gojira is all about Godzilla emerging and people trying to destroy him, you completely fail to comprehend why the movie was made and why it is telling the story it is instead of a monster ball. It is trying to go back to Godzilla's roots, back to the 54 movie with a similar plot and accomplish the same goals that the original was trying to do, which is setting out to tell a story that extends far beyond the screen and into the real world. It is meant to be simplistic so it doesn't overshadow the message in the allegory. Shin Gojira is straight up satire, but you wouldn't know that because you just look at everything on face value. Retaining balance to the world as we know it. A power to restore balance. I believe he is the power. The movie audio that's played is leaps and bounds quieter than the narration, leading to this odd sudden quietness from the clip, making this moment feel extremely awkward. He emerges, people try to stop him, it doesn't work at first, they try to stop him again, finally they get him, and that's it. Again, you are oversimplifying the plot of Shin Gojira to make it appear much duller than it actually is. I can do the same thing with Godzilla 2014. The story is about a soldier who keeps running into giant monsters as they fight. See? It works both ways. Godzilla 2014 definitely takes this point. Yeah, with your rundown Google plot synopsis, Godzilla 2014 should get that point. I want to hear a real rundown from someone who can do a real analysis of the movies. As for Godzilla 2014, the main characters of the film, we have Ford Brody. He's a bomb defusal expert who is returning home to his family when he gets a call from Japan. The problem is Godzilla 2014 has notoriously dull characters. They are stereotypes other than Sarazawa. You have the conspiracy theorist, the soldier trying to get home while remaining mostly emotionless the whole movie, the uptight military general who doesn't listen to reason, the son of the main character who's just there to make the audience want to see the main character get home, and the wife who does nothing helpful and just needs to be rescued. And that is coming from someone who loves Godzilla 2014 and its characters. Although judging the movie, that is all they are. The only time you really Really get a feel for how great these characters really are is in the novelization. If you read it, you will realize how run down and boring the movie's cast is. As for Shin Godzilla, uh, 
I don't even know why I wrote down these names. Shin Gojida is an ensemble cast. It is that for two reasons. Number one, so that you can see the bureaucratic government Japan is being run by with so many faces and names and titles that all blend together. Most of the characters are dull to highlight that and accompany the allegory and message of the movie. The second reason is to show that Japan has to unify and everyone from all different countries have to work together. Anno expertly shows that throughout the movie and highlights five main characters who get unique personalities over the rest of the cast. Not to say they don't have personalities, they do, but these guys are the ones who shine. There is Rando, the guy who knows what's going on but isn't listened to due to him not being as high of a rank as everyone else. Kyoko, the enthusiastic American who dreams of becoming the president of the US, she is the most informed on the situation and handles connections between the US and Japan. Prime Minister Okachi, arrogant leader who has a tendency to underestimate situations but still maintains good intentions all the while. Hideki, the guy who has to get things done, he's the lawmaker and the best friend of Rando, and Hiromi, the scientific mind who is overlooked as a result of her non-government position resulting in her being the smartest one in the room with the most attitude. But the majority of the characters in this movie get moments to shine. If you would open your eyes and pay some attention, you'd notice. You have Rando Yaguchi. That's not Rando Yaguchi. Hideki Akasaka. That's not Hideki. I switched the two pictures. Did you guys even notice that? Yes. The girl actually wants to be the U.S. president or something? I... I don't know. Well, if you pay any attention, it's only stated ten times. There is nothing memorable about the characters in Shin Godzilla. If you ask most people, even Godzilla fans, they will say Godzilla 2014 has super unmemorable characters. There's Brian Cranston, that guy from the Avengers, that girl from the Avengers, and Sarazawa. The most bland characters I have seen in a kaiju film. I guess you haven't seen many kaiju movies. I would much rather take the cast from a random Showa era movie and put them in Shin Godzilla. No, you would not. Assuming you were referring to bad Showa movies, which you are, because you were trying to lower the movie's level to show how bad it is, meaning you have to exclude all the great Showa casts, such as Mothra vs. Godzilla's, Gojira's, you are left with garbage like Hedera, and no one on Earth, including you, would want to see that cast again. There's no real personal motivation for that. Again, Richard must not have been reading any of the subtitles to believe this to be true. It is literally just like you took the background extras, told them, Hey, guess what? You guys are gonna be the main characters in this Godzilla movie. That is literally it. Overuse of the word literally. I was debating whether or not I should give the point to Shin Godzilla because they used the original scores. But then I was thinking how lazy that is. It's lazy to reuse scores? Are you joking? This is not only the point trying to make a Showa throwback film, but also what Ifakube and many Godzilla soundtracks are known for. Godzilla 2000 gets high praise for its use of Ifukube music. Godzilla vs. Biollante is the same. And Ifukube loved to reuse his music. Listen to any movie he scored and you will hear classic Godzilla music make an appearance in some way, shape, or form. That's what he did. That's what makes music iconic. And now it's lazy? Really? They didn't even re-record it. It sounds like they ripped it straight from YouTube. They didn't re-record the old music in the traditional sense, but they did revamp it to make it sound better. Here's some comparisons. <laughs> Then you have some scores like Kyosetai. I don't know where he gets the titles for this music from, but the official name for the song is EM20. Or Ultimate. Again, I don't know where he's getting these titles for the songs from, but the official name for this song is Omni. Early morning in Tokyo. What? Early morning in Tokyo is meant to show Japan moving on. It's meant to be contrasted with the rest of the music. 
taking the song that was showing the high point of the characters' lives in the movie, aka the happiest song on the soundtrack, and acting like the whole movie is ruined because it can't be played over every action scene is stupid for any movie. Of course it doesn't fit. I'll do the same thing with 2014. and they only use about three classic original songs. There's actually a total of five classic songs played in Shin Gojira before the credits. When he evolves, Godzilla relanding using the original theme, and the military march. You act like it's a bad thing the classic music was played so little in Shin Gojira, when two minutes ago you were saying it was lazy it was reused at all. Every single theme in 2014, however, is new and original. Richard says every theme from 2014 is original, yet in a minute we'll hear him praise the movie for reusing a theme from a different movie not relying on the classics, trying to be its own thing. The music in 2014 is not trying to be its own at all. Alexander Desplat was trying to recreate Ifakube's feel and make the music similar to Ifakube's to give it that classic feel and not make Legendary pay for the rights of the real music from Toho. 2014 sets a very eerie and suspenseful tone. Most prominently is the Halo Jump score, which is the only non-original score. That's hypocriticism at work. Special effects. This one is pretty obvious. Judging the movies based off special effects is like judging a $160 million movie against a $15 million budget movie. Oh wait, that's exactly what is happening? Shin Goja had $145 million less than 2014's budget. Well, that's just unfair from the get-go, not to mention this is Japan where they are behind on special effects compared to the United States. This is actually almost unfair, but I had to put it in here just to be fair. Makes sense. Also, am I hearing Nerf Man styled contradictions? I think I am. This one is also fairly obvious. You cannot judge these movies based off action. 2014 is an action movie. Shin Gojira is a political satire. I don't see a satire section of this review to even the odds out. What gives? And yes, they are lasers. I actually had a debate with this with a member from the Godzilla Google Plus community. Cool guy. They are in fact lasers, however. They are made up of photons, as he stated. Photons are a form of electromagnetic radiation, and a laser is made up of light or electromagnetic radiation. So yeah, they're lasers. <laughs> they're not lasers, they're photons which carry such high radiation they're visible to the human eye. Similar to the light released at the Chernobyl disaster. Just because they're similar, doesn't mean they're the same is the main characters are never in any danger. Stating the main characters are never in any danger in a movie where Godzilla kills off the majority of the cast from the first act in one swoop is ridiculous. Godzilla 2014 never has any main characters in any real danger, however. Joe is the only one who is killed off due to a dangerous situation. Yes, Ford is in some danger here and there, but this isn't Game of Thrones. We know he's going to make it out of these situations. The only other time in the movie the main character is in any real danger is the scene where Godzilla stomps the female Muto into the floor right over the subway where Elle is hiding. In Godzilla 2014, however, Ford is always in the action front and center. Ford always being in the action is not a good thing. This leads to too many plot coincidences and conveniences, and is actually one of Godzilla 2014's biggest flaws. Now while we don't get much of Godzilla destroying a city, we do get a fair amount though with him on the Golden Gate Bridge and stuff like that. No one on Earth actually qualifies Godzilla walking around next to and eventually through the Golden Gate Bridge in less than three minutes as enough Godzilla destroying stuff and you know it. They're a match for Godzilla. The military is not, which makes it more redundant. Saying the military is not a match for Godzilla in a movie where the military uses a formula created by some scientists and government workers to defeat Godzilla is also ridiculous. One of the biggest complaints about Godzilla 2014 was that there wasn't enough action. Actually, there wasn't enough action was not one of the biggest 2014 complaints. There's not being enough Godzilla was where the complaints came in, but nice try. So many times I was looking at my phone during Shin Godzilla waiting for Godzilla to appear on screen and I was in the movie theater for god's sakes. And that explains why you missed half of the plot and depth of the movie because you're an action junkie and you can't sit through some human scenes when you have to read. The subtitles were a distribution problem on Funimation's part for rushing the movie, not on the part of the movie itself. Nerf Man didn't see Shin Gojira during the time it was out in America. But you never get that sense of scale or immersion. There are plenty of times Shin Gojira is shown with great scale that are just not as often as in 2014. 
Shin Godzilla has a very dull look to it. Godzilla 2014 is shot with gray scale with minimum color. The red in the halo jump stands out so much because there's so little color anywhere else in the movie. This leads to yet another American action movie being filmed in such a way that it can't stand out from all the others like it, which is a shame because the directing is absolutely amazing. Shin Gojira is filmed with a brown and yellow scale, making the day and night scenes clash so drastically. It makes the movie more entertaining and not the same in every scene. This is the biggest point of personal preference in what was supposed to be an analytical view of these movies yet. Nothing in Shin Godzilla can ever come close to the Halo insertion scene. Judging 2014 off one scene is just unfair to Shin Gojira. If you were to do the same in the other way around and show off the fantastic scene of Godzilla battling the military on his way to Tokyo, you would see all the same elements that made the Halo jump scene great. Shots from soldiers' perspective, great scale, interesting and creative camera work we've never seen in a Godzilla movie before, and so on. He should have been the director of the new up-and-coming Godzilla Planet of Monsters, or whatever it's called. It's called Godzilla Monster Planet, but whatever. He completely bastardized the original idea and feeling of Godzilla. Calling Shin Gojira a bastardization of the original Godzilla is a failure to understand the original Godzilla in the first place. He also put an entire mouth on the end of Godzilla's tail to make him shoot a laser. <sighs> there... There is no face that shoots a laser in Godzilla's tail. Although it looks like there is, that is only a stylistic choice. I can't... I can't do this. And he made Godzilla shoot a laser light show out of his back. Godzilla's laser light show is a more focused atomic pulse, which is something Godzilla has done since the 1980s. Not to mention he also has Godzilla humanoids growing on the end of his tail. The humanoids on Godzilla's tail were part of the movie's message about men being the real monsters and how we have to live with ourselves and the evil we create, but that again is all lost on you. Everyone, even Japan especially, they complained that Godzilla 2014 was too fat. People who hate on Legendary's Godzilla because he is quote unquote fat are people without a Godzilla. Legendary played it so safe and created such a classic Godzilla he came straight out of one of the Toho movies. But look at Shin Godzilla, oh my god, he is one of the fattest from the chest and waist down Godzillas we've ever seen. Shin Gojira is not fat. He has large legs to support the weight on his body. Lots of Godzillas are bottom heavy. Also, he has the skinniest upper half of a Godzilla to date in relation to the rest of his body. 2014 played it safe. They didn't add any new powers to Godzilla. They didn't make him very generic. Why would you say they played it too safe, but didn't make him generic? This is generic. It's just a standard Godzilla. At least Anno did something different, so we don't have to put up with the same thing over and over and over again for 60 plus years. They took their liberties as well, but still kept the iconic feeling of Godzilla. They took zero liberties with Godzilla other than the roar. They only did that because they did not have the right to the Toho roar. All design changes came from a place of thinking Godzilla was too unrealistic. They weren't creative liberties, they were just trying to appeal to a wider audience. The atomic bomb message, which 2014 still has, but they don't even have that in Shin Godzilla. Godzilla 2014 has such a watered down version of the atomic bomb message, it's not even in the movie at all. All we get of allegory with it is Sarazawa didn't want new bombs to go off because his dad was a Hiroshima survivor. But in Shin Godzilla, they rewrite the entire character, even rewriting the origin. Again, they do this so that Godzilla isn't stale and the same thing we've seen over and over again. This is so we have a new version of the character to add to the 63-year-old collection. They make him into every other generic Ultraman or Gamera Kaiju who can shoot lasers out of his hands, tail, back, chest, whatever. I would say a laser shooting Kaiju is the opposite of generic. It's more creative than any fire breathing trope we've seen since Godzilla ripoff started in the 1950s. Godzilla actually has more in common with Godzilla than Shin Godzilla does. Well, that's not true at all. But yes guys, with that said, that finally concludes why Godzilla 2014 as a film is better than Shin Godzilla. You know, it's better for those who don't use their brains to comprehend the true meaning of the movie being shown. What is this victory montage? The Shin Godzilla hate is back guys, and I am loving this. And there you ruin any credibility that you could have had 
ever by celebrating hating on a movie and making a video where you make it look like 2014 is the greatest Godzilla movie ever made simply because it appeals to the demographic you're pandering to. Give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Also, like guys, tell me down below. Well, that was a poor line delivery there, wasn't it? But yes, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm the Gojira 54. As always, out. That outro is eerily similar to that other Godzilla YouTubers, isn't it? D-Man, out. It doesn't matter if you like Godzilla 2014 more or Shin Gojira. The problem with this video was the reasoning, not the verdict, to prove that once and off. You fucking bitch. You fucking bitch.